I'd like to start this unit with a recording that really goes back to unit four and talks a little bit about how tables calculate formulas. One of the things I didn't demonstrate because the book didn't talk about it until chapter eight is how tables can improve your formula entry. <clears throat> so I have opened up the unit five GPA calculator. Got that from the unit five folder. <clears throat> I'm going to do a quick save as just in case I need to go back. And I'm just going to take off the unit five part. That'll be enough just as long as it's different. Okay, and then what we want to do is mess with the table. This is kind of a student transcript report that I've generated that's going to cover most of that is going to be used for most of this unit. It's got some separate worksheets. The first one is kind of a summary. It tells the student their GPA when they're done. Over here we have a table full of grade records. This is what we're going to be messing with here in just a little bit. We also have a student's table that has a bunch of student information in it. And then finally we have some lookup information that we'll use in the lookup recording. I'm, for right now, in this one, I'm going to go back to the grade records. And what I want to do is calculate the total number of points that a student has earned for taking this class. This student got an A in the class. It's a three credit class. An A is worth four grade points. And so the total number of points is simply the credits times the number of points earned. So I'm going to put that formula in here. And I'm just going to type it first of all. I'm going to type D2 times E2 and press enter. And notice what happens automatically because we're in a table, Excel automatically fills that formula into every cell into that table. And this is what I wanted to demonstrate. Every cell. So that can save you a lot of time. You don't have to type the formula and then fill it down and maybe fill it across. If you're in a table, it automatically gives every row in that table the exact same formula. The only thing I have to do is format this. And to make life a little easier, I'm going to press, I'm going to hold the shift key down and press end down arrow and that highlights as it's going down to the last filled cell and I want to make all of these points have two decimal places. Okay, So that's one way to enter that formula. Another thing that happens because we're inside of a table <coughs> is Excel allows you to reference these headers in your formulas instead of using cell addresses. So right now I have D2 times E3, but what I can do instead is by putting square brackets around my header names, notice a list pops up. I want to multiply the credits, press tab, close square bracket, times, square bracket, the points per credit, tab, square bracket. It's the exact same formula, but it's a little easier to read. Because we're in a table, this is not an absolute reference. This just says for the current row that we're in, multiply the credits times the current row's points per credit. So these are imply the current record. And notice all of these are still updating. This is one times four, that's right, three times four, yep, one times 1.33, yep, everything seems to be working fine. There is one final way you can do this, and that's to click in this cell and enter an equal sign and then use what I call the point and shoot method, use your mouse. So I'm going to point to the credits for this row and notice that Excel inserts the credit reference formula name. It happens to stick an at sign in front of it. I'm not sure why, whether that's really necessary. I'm sure you could edit it out, but if you leave it in, it doesn't cause any trouble. And then I'm going to multiply by the points for credit. Again, there's the at sign. Okay. And notice there's also, in this one at least, because there's spaces, there's extra square brackets. But again, bottom line, it calculates all the way down. We get the same answers. That's the way I usually do it. I try not to let the at signs bother me too much. It's better than typing. I don't type so good. One other thing you can do with these headers is to calculate the total. Okay. So I can come over here. I'm just going to put it in this place and say this is the total credits taken colon and then in this cell over here I'm going to type in a sum and then I'm going to use the table name actually let's see if I can just use the square brackets nope I have to use the table name first and this table name does have a name it's called student grades there it is I named that table 
and then I can use the square brackets to get to the credits column. Missed it. Credits tab, square bracket, and then the end of the sum. And it calculates them all. So again, we can use the names in our formulas of the columns, but when you do that, notice I'm outside of the table now, so I have to reference the table name first and then the column name. And you can actually do that. I'll come over here and do it again and say in here I want the sum of the student grades, square bracket, credits, tab, close it up. Same thing. I don't have to include the sheet name because the table name is already imbe embedded inside of that formula. Okay, I don't really want to do that, so we'll take that out. Okay. And we'll just click over here, and we'll go to the grade records, and that's probably okay. So we'll save this and call that a recording. So remember, when you have tables, formulas are very easy to enter. And by the way, we're, we will, in a later recording, add another column here. When I do, it automatically gets added to the, to the table. Any formulas I enter in there are automatically filled down. Any changes I make to the formulas are automatically filled down. But I will recommend one thing, that if you change the formulas, I recommend you change the first one. As you'll see in a future unit, when we change these, if we need to make something absolute, right, or take the absolute out, if you did it in the middle here, it would put an absolute value in one, it would be the wrong one. So you want to make sure that if you're editing the formula, my recommendation is you do it in the very first cell of the table that contains that formula. So that should make life a little easier. Actually, another reason to use tables is just because you don't have to copy formulas down. And we can use these names in our formulas to make them a little easier to read.